Made on Zencaster. Welcome, oh listener, to another episode of Bite Sized Virtue. Just a short episode today because I don't have much time to record or edit it. But we are once again looking at the virtue of humility by exploring what humility is not. So if you've been following the last couple of weeks of Bite Sized Virtue, you know that we are following St. Josemaria Escriva's 17 thoughts on a lack of humility, his evident signs of a lack of humility. And this week, for brevity's sake, I'm only going to focus on one, but it's one that I think, you know, we can all recognize, for those of us at least who've been following meme culture for a while, and that is giving your opinion without being asked for it when charity does not demand you to do so. Now, I suppose that could even apply to these podcast episodes that I'm doing right now, because I am, in some way, just sitting here offering my opinion, kind of unvarnished and kind of unbidden, out to the wider internet audience. That said, I do have something of a tradition of at least trying to do these sorts of reflections on the virtues around Easter, around Lent, around Advent and Christmas, and I've been doing it for a while. So I'm hoping that the habitualness of it at least partially absolves me from being, um, singled out under this own or under this particular evident sign of a lack of humility, although I could be so accused at times for sure. But I think we can all recognize this one. I hope we can all recognize this one. If we've spent any time on the meme scene, this is the actually, right? The the pedantic people, the, the ones who just have to step in unbidden at the drop of a hat to correct somebody, to offer a, a differing perspective you know, the, the, this is also the meme where it's like, you know, everybody else, blank, such and such, big long piece of text. We all seen that template too, I'm sure. Or like I say, the bespectacled guy with the glasses and the neck beard. And actually, not that there isn't a time and place to correct somebody if they do speak in error. Not that there isn't a time and place to present a differing opinion. Not that there isn't a time and place to have that open exchange of ideas, and not that there isn't even a time and place to be the one to put forth an idea or an opinion first so that others might respond to it. But there is also a time not to do these things, a bit of Ecclesiastes there, I suppose. You know, there's a time to speak and a time to refrain from speaking. And I think that's really what this one is about. It's just, you know, being the one to opine and to put forth and to interject when it's not appropriate to do so, when there's not an invitation to do so, but when there's, there's also not a, uh, an opportunity, like when it's not an appropriate opportunity to do so, you know, and I'll admit this is sometimes, you know, a really hard thing for me because there's so much out there that I just think, oh, I really want to respond to that. Oh, I really want to just hold forth on this for a while. And occasionally I will, but a lot of the times now I, I just stop myself partly because you know what? I don't want to start a fight. I don't want to be uncharitable to other people if I can avoid it. Um, if I can catch myself in the temptation to be uncharitable towards people, try and stop myself. I don't want the fight. I don't want the argument necessarily. And I don't, I think I'm past the point in my life where I really, really, really want to drive people away with the opinions that I hold. Uh, which is not to say that, you know, I'm interested necessarily in changing some of the opinions that I hold some, yes, but I can recognize that there are different ways to articulate them in different contexts in which it is appropriate to articulate them and not appropriate to articulate them. And that's true for all of us. Not everything needs to be about our favored cause. Not everything needs to always be redirected back to the same talking points that animate our thought day after day. And we definitely don't need to constantly interject those thoughts, those opinions, those positions into everyday conversation or when there is no call for it. And recognizing that can be difficult, right? Because, I mean, especially when it's something that, you know, we're really fired up about, something that burns in us something that we do feel strongly about. You know, we do kind of want to, there, there's that temptation in that sense, you know, yeah, like this is super important and we should really be like focusing on this as much as possible. And that is true to a degree, but it doesn't mean that every single situation is always appropriate to bring up the cause yet again, or to hold forth an opinion on a favorite topic yet again. Sometimes, Silence is the best response. Sometimes silence is the best approach. So, that is the really short one today. Evident sign of a lack of humility. 
giving your opinion without being asked for it when charity does not demand you to do so. And I guess there's something to be said too at the end, because I did talk a little bit about charitableness, because sometimes it is appropriate to hold forth an opinion. Sometimes it's almost an obligation, right? To hold forth a particular opinion or to correct someone or to stand up and say your piece. Sometimes there is actually like a moral impetus to do so, but not always. And it, if you refrain from speaking, it doesn't mean that you are failing your beliefs. You're not failing your cause. Everybody, though, has to choose their battles and choose their battlefields. And sometimes the right thing to do is to just not speak or to wait a while for a more appropriate time and situation. Okay, that ends the reflection this week. Like I said, short and sweet. Thank you again for listening, and until next time, be virtuous. Be virtuous.